Welcome to, to all of you. Um, what an absolute pleasure and what a privilege to be spending the next hour um, uh, with all of you. We are going to be talking about, I think, you know, it's been on all of our minds, chat GPT. I can't tell you mm -hmm. how excited and nervous I am. I This event actually switched out. We had on the fly decided on the last minute that we were going to talk about this topic because everybody wants to know about it. And we couldn't have had two better people to share um, about this topic with us. So I am going to get started. Um, and I will start first by mentioning to all of you in the room, there's some of you who are here wanting CPD certification. If you recall, we can CPD certify you for your licensing. So if you're interested and you need CPD certification for attending today, talk to Kate. She will put a link and get you all your CPD certification. Now, I wanted to have ChatGPT do a poem for us, since technically, you know, this is our coming out, you know, um, a, a talk with ChatGPT, but ChatGPT told me that the capacity is down right now. <laughs> I think all of us have gotten that message, which says GP, ChatGPT is at capacity right now. Get notified when we're back and we get this cheeky little poem or a joke. So, um, I couldn't give you a poem about, you know, I wanted to ask ChatGPT, you know, we're having a coming out party for you. What would you like to say? Um, so couldn't get that answer. But on that note, let's get started. I want to present to you guys, Haley. Haley, can you wave at everybody? Let everybody see. Haley, where are you? Can I, can we see you, Haley? There you go, Haley. Hey, everyone. Yeah, there you go. So Haley is the co-founder of 1021. She is, you know, uh, uh, you know, I have a great story about Haley. I went to an event and met Haley last year and I told her I was an introvert and she like stuck by me for the event, you know, was my wing lady. Haley's an incredible software developer with a software development company. And she's going to talk about chat GV, uh, GPT and how she uses it in software development. So really, really excited. Um, Haley, what an absolute privilege to have you here. And Dean is our marketing guru. I, I've been, I hold on, Dean, I've been stalking you on LinkedIn. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Like he needs to come and share some of his shininess with the community. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Dean, for saying yes. And thank you for, you know, kind of showing up and coming to talk to us. Um, as the community today. Um, you know, our community is very international, guys. So people are dialing in from everywhere, all different places as we go through the learning sprint. So enjoy it. So format, you know our format. We normally have a couple of questions where you get to know our speakers a little bit. And then we go into two 10 minute presentations and then we do our breakout rooms where we kind of get to hang out with each other. So the first question I'm going to ask, and either Haley or Dean can take this question, um, is explain chat GPT to an eight-year-old, and what is the weirdest and coolest thing you've done on it, right? So I'm going to stop my share, and I'm going to get some faces, and who is going to take that? Who's going to go? Uh, uh, Dean or Haley, you have a choice. Who wants to go first? I'll do it first if you want, Haley. But they might, I might get booted off after I tell them what. Okay, I've done tell us, Dean. Come on, let's go. Let Let's have the controversial version first. Let's so, go. So obviously, um, as opposed to Haley, I do it for marketing content. So I, for the fun of it, asked, "What are the best pickup lines uh, <laughs> that you can use?" Um, and Hold on, um, did they work, Dean? Did they work? Well, I can't use them. I'm married, but I was just curious to know what they were. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what, so that, is that the, uh, and what about if you had to explain to an eight-year-old, what exactly is chat GPT? Um, all of the internet pre 2021 with an assistant to help you find it. Ah, okay. So that's, that's how that's, that's the easiest way to explain it, really. I, I mean, I, I probably I'd flip it the other way and go, what does ChatGPT to an 81-year-old? Okay. 
And yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And so it's it's when the computers take over for good. When the computers take over. Haley, we need you to jump in here. Where are you, Haley? Come on, we need you jumping in here. For me, if I'm explaining it to a to an eight-year-old, I would say it's a extremely smart robot who can answer your questions or okay. at least assist your questions. Mm -hmm. And okay. for me, uh, I've been asking a lot of, so me being an engineer, I was testing until it failed. So I would ask a question again and again, and then I got to the point that it was start, uh, ChatGPT was giving wrong answers mm -hmm. and uh, correcting the robot. So it's the weirdest thing that I did. I don't know why I did that. I gave like a logic puzzle. Uh, you know, do you know those, you know, math puzzles where you need to fill in the blank? Mm -hmm. so there's like a star sign or, you know, heart sign and you need to figure out the equation. So yeah. I would ask, hey, can you find the answer? And chat goes, no, it's difficult because we're a chat. I'm like, try it, try it, and then try it. And then I would, I'll continue doing that. And based on this test, uh, I learned that chat GPT is very advanced, but not as accurate as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about it a little more later um, at the during my presentation. Oh, wow. You know what? It's so funny you say that. I'm not an engineering brain, but um, I did the same thing to try and break it. I don't know what it was. It was like, okay, how can I? And it started giving me error messages. <laughs> like I started asking, it was like error, you know, and then it like stopped. And I was like, does that mean you're not answering it for me? <laughs> okay. My next question before we go into presentations, how does it work? right? Because we have all kinds of age groups here, guys, and people who know about it, people who don't know about it. How does it work? And what kind of AI, right? We hear about all these different kinds of AIs, like many of us don't know what are the different kinds of AI and why it's why this is so scary and awesome at the same time. Who would like to answer that? That's definitely a Haley question. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love how you, you nominated you decided. <laughs> I'll, I'll begin with the standard answer. So, so here, ChatGPT is a combination of machine learning and deep learning. And the scary, awesome, and scary part is the way it's presenting the data to you. So, mm -hmm. the chat. I personally think the reason that ChatGPT is going viral is because of how intelligent it is in terms of emotion like it, there's like emotional intelligence built in mm -hmm. so can you tell so, us Haley, what's the difference between machine learning and deep learning for those people who don't know yes uh so oh wait let me uh, how do i describe did I stump this? you or do i did i stump you it's okay i'm just trying to find a well uh can i share my screen yeah, you can. I'm going to stop share and I'm going to let you, um, because you said those words and sometimes yeah. when we're very close to it, we think people know what we're talking about. And sometimes many of us are like, what the heck did she, what's the difference between those two? I know, I hold on, I know my there's chicken. A, <laughs> there's a perfect diagram that I want to show everybody. Okay, let's go. Hold on, we know who's the nerdy one in the group today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can love it. You, yeah. Can we you can't see, see my, we can't see yet. Not, not yet. There we go. Can you see this? Yes. Okay, now. cool. Cool. So so here is the difference between machine learning and deep learning. Okay. So, okay. so machine learning is the one that we're more familiar with. So there is input and then we extract the feature. And then it learns and then, you know, classify, learns, and then we repeat the process until we get the output. Deep learning is, I would say, smarter version of machine learning. So it would take an input and then it will do feature extraction and uh, classification together and progress all together and then get the output. So here, ChatGPT does both at the same time. So sometimes if it, if the AI feels like extraction, extraction should be done earlier, they first do the extraction and then start learning classifying. But sometimes if it's better to learn as you go, it also does it. Mm. I hope that's- Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, why is that 
important and why is it scary and awesome at the same time? It's scary and awesome because it modifies the way they're presenting the search result. So for, for Google search result, whatever is popular, people click the most shows up, right? And we see the factual things that's related to our search keyword. But here, the chat GPT is presenting it in a way that you want. If you tell chat GPT to be your secretary, they'll be, uh, ex- uh, they'll be polite. Uh, if you tell them to be uh, your software engineer, they'll give you a lot of detailed descriptions. If you ask them to be prompt and be uh, uh, give give them a quick summary, that's how they will. Wh- whichever they whichever the way that you prefer, they'll present it in that way. So that's the scary part. Mm-hmm. So hold on, if I say be a bad boss, it will do that too, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love that. Well, Haley, if you can stop sharing, and now, guys, I hope that was that was very helpful. I didn't know that, mm-hmm. by the way, the way that you presented that machine learning versus mm-hmm. deep learning. Um, I would love Dean now mm-hmm. to start his presentation, and and uh, you know, this is the great thing about our community, guys, is you're going to get two different lens completely. Mm-hmm. Um, on a particular topic, um, and we always do that, right? This is the beauty of the Gleek Mentor community. This is the mm-hmm. beauty of how we learn because we get to see all kinds of blind spots and hidden areas. So, Dean, it is show time for you and your presentation. We cannot. Well, I'm going to break the rules a bit, Sally, Ann, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my presentation on Chat GPT. Oh, you are. Oh, is so it up? I've sat Hold on, here it and got for onto is it. it up? Hold on, is I've... it up for you or is it down? It's up for me. Can you see? Okay. Everybody see my screen? Okay. Yeah, we can see your screen. So How the cool. back, the background for me, just so everybody's aware, is I'm in the marketing social media world. So I'm looking at ChatGPT and going, "How can this save me time?" And I think one of the places where me and Haley will agree is that. It's a tool that helps you. It's not a replacement for you. And a lot of the hype at the moment about ChatGPT is, oh, it can write all my content. If you play that down the road, it actually destroys the marketing industry because not because nobody's got a job, but because if humans check out of content, then why do you need social media? So I'm pretty confident that it'll become an assistant. It will become an idea generator. It will improve things. But what I call the last mile, making it your own, will actually stay with you. You can't just bash in. So what I thought I did is actually I did, and I think this is how sally Ann found me. I started writing prompts for content marketing for chat GPT to give people some tips. And I wrote an article and basically said, it's good, but it could make us lazy. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't know whether Haley will chip in on this later, but there's also a risk that if we become too dependent on it, we get one idea, you know, like the social media echo chamber. Well, imagine the social media echo chamber, which is now actually a social media hallway. And it's so narrow, you only see things. So there is that risk that, you know, when the internet first came out and Google was like, wow. And then social media came out and all you see is the opinions you see. Imagine if it told you exactly what you wanted to see and you saw nothing else. Could be quite scary from that point of view. I don't think it's going to take over the nuclear codes or anything like that, but I think it could make us um, very... uh, close-minded if we if if we're not careful so first things first i'm going to show you how i i made content i'll do it in real time uh feel free to chip in and ask questions i'm just going to make sure the chat shows up so i can see it yeah let's make your chat um, i've got a three screen laptop which is fascinating but also hold on you're like hell- a real marketer right <laughs> it's one hell of a learning curve when you've got so many different uh spaces so, right, here we go. I've got chat GPT. The interface is pretty simple. But you the input is only as good as you. So, for an example, if I go 
give me five ideas for tweets uh, that solopreneurs will love, right? There's a basic prompt, right? Loads of people are doing these, right? But look what it's doing. It's talking as me. So some of you, and I don't know whether you want to raise your hands or, or uh, say in the chat, you'll have tried this and maybe found that, oh, it doesn't feel that good. It's actually, and this is where hopefully you don't all fall out with me. It's not that the AI isn't good. It's that we're not very good. The AI can do more than we think. So let me just give you another idea. Give me five uh, tweets that solopreneurs will love. Okay. I'll just do it again. I'm doing tweets because it's an easier. Oh, there we go. Right. Do you see it's still talking? So I need to give it more context to be able to put this together. Right. But it's having a good go. Right. It's starting to get a bit better because it's now starting to learn what I want. Right. So what I do is what I do is help people grow a business online. So I want to give it some context. As an expert in growing businesses online, write me five tweets that solopreneurs will love. So now I'm going to give it some context. Yeah, but it's now just making stuff up and I can refine it. Yeah, but I'm going to go one step further. Once it's done it. And the good thing about this is you can actually talk right as you would communicate and it will generally pick it up. So now I'm going to switch to write me a uh, uh, hundred word social media post, which will motivate solopreneurs in the coaching world, uh, sector, uh, in uh, life, uh, motivate life coaches, uh, no, sorry, solopreneur, life coaches, about the opportunities they can have from growing their business online. So there, I've just made more descriptions. I've limited it. And then um, I can say, um, keep the sentences short or less than eight words. and write with a confident confident tone end the post with a question right now i've still not given it any context of what it's going to write it's going to write about growing your solopreneur coaching business online so the more granular the more details i put in and we got a question there. Uh, so we can see here, yeah, in the questions. I want to act as a role. I will provide you with. These are all great ways to add more content. So you can add uh, act as. So you can add act as uh, 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 a business growth expert. There's the first one. Then I can say, okay, what about, what do I want? What value do you want to bin? Write me a hundred word post with, uh, about the key benefits of growing a business on LinkedIn. Uh, include the following points. 
personal branding, um, in, uh, higher value clients, less marketing money spent on ads, and um, and I can put it in that way. So the key is to basically write almost your script, as Ian's put in there, write your script of how you want it to be written, what the points you want to make, and if it keeps up with me, um, and basically lay that out into a format. The prompts are everything. And what you'll find is the more, uh, the future of this will be how well you can create prompts. It won't be about the limitations of the, of the AI. It will actually about your ability to create prompts. And I've got it to write email scripts. I've got it to write um, messages and posts all around the power of the scripts. So or the prompts. So I would think about the context, the pain points. It's kind of given up. Some of you might be thinking, well, what are the key challenges that my audience face that I want to communicate? So it's like you can ask it that question. What are the key pain points that life coaches face around growing their business on social media? Does that make sense? Um, or growing their business on LinkedIn. And then you can add more detail and more detail. Don't expect to get it perfect on the first time. I, in the article I wrote, which ChatGPT shared, I talked about starting very high level. And, you know, um, I'll, it's, it's caught up with me now. You know what what caught, what is catching my my uh, is going through my head Dean as you're speaking is you know I've always said the quality of the questions lets me know if you're thinking or not right uh, I think yeah. my entire team will tell you that you know whenever I say anything I always go you know I don't I, I always just sit and observe the questions and this is mm -hmm. a perfect example of where the quality of the questions make all the difference it's mm -hmm. kind of like writing a brief right uh, for yeah. any any yeah. and the quality of the questions is going to matter and mm -hmm. i just wonder where we talk about we have you know a generation that does not have critical thinking and does not have problem solving and does not have creative thinking and not knowing the types of questions to ask mm -hmm. um right and I, you know i'm so, going to throw it out there so, very controversially so the good part about that is that's where you can reverse that and start at the very beginning and say what are the objections, so for an example, I, I don't serve life coaches, but it's just stuck in my head today, have around growing a business on LinkedIn. Now, oh, this grand experiment may not work so well in a second. That's all right. I Haley just... have hers down. I have mine's down, so... Uh, so basically what we can do is think about it as a staged process. Mm -hmm. So number one, start with what are the questions that it, it might, uh, have it, it, uh, currently Haley, correct me if I'm wrong. It's got data up to 2021. Is it November, 2021? After that, it's got, it doesn't know anything on the internet kind of thing. Um, but what I'm thinking, what I would be thinking is use it. We talk about chat, chat GPT as it, the quality of the prompts determine the outcome. But I'd also challenge you, why don't you let chat GPT give you the prompts from a content point of view? So ask it questions like, uh, give me five uh, post ideas for coaches who want to use LinkedIn to get clients. Because, uh, huh, there it is. Um, so we ask it the questions, not because we think it's going to be perfect coming out, but it prompts us to ask better questions. And so I did this whole experiment of saying, tell me five reasons why. And I went, oh, I'd never thought of that. 
And then I would ask it more about what it had asked, asked, it gave me and then asked more about it and more about it. And so what happens is AI can actually help me help AI. And that's the kind of scary thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so literally it's collective wisdom, right? Brainstorming. Um, and almost it's like DJing, right? So you, you, what you're saying is, you know, ask it one thing, it'll give you something and then you can go back and ask it something. So it, it's literally like DJ, right? Riffing off of what it gives you that it continues and you're correct. You're going back and you're helping it because yeah. you're actually teaching it how you uh, use and, it. And a big problem in my world that I work in is effectively people don't know what to input because if you've ever tried to write a post on social media, any of you here, what happens is you start and about five minutes into it, you don't have any idea what you're going to say next or you don't know how to end it or any of that stuff. So you can use it to create the ideas that prompts you that then you go, ah, we'll do something about that. Let's get AI to dig a bit deeper and give me some more inspo. Ah, it's giving me something back. And so it is that kind of iteration loop between you and it. Um, that said, one of my frustrations is sometimes um, it gets caught in a loop where it will basically give you the same things over and over again. And that's where you have to kind of tell it, forget everything we've just discussed and, <laughs> and start again. Um, but okay, this is good. the thing. It's a collaborate. It's a collaboration between AI and you. Wonderful. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Dean. And now, Dean, is there anything you want to add before I have Haley come in and give us a whole different point of view on this? Haley's going to blow it out the water with all because she actually understands it. I just play with it. <laughs> okay. It. So, Dean, if you can stop your share and let's have Haley put her stuff up. Hello, Kasim. Nice to have you. Hey, guys. Can you guys see my screen? We can. Perfect. Dean, I think your uh, pre uh, your presentation was awesome. Like, I did not think of more of like a copyright perspective. Very interesting. Thank you. Mine is more about so how especially the current version of chat GPT that's available to everyone, how to utilize the existing version of this. So it's not as, as I discussed, they, they are sometimes giving you wrong answers, outdated. So how do we use it for development now? Any software developers in the room? Can I see it in the chat? Do we have any software developers in here? Let's see. I, I spotted a few. Like I pretend to be a developer, Haley. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> well, uh, this is like a funny meme that I found. Like, yeah. develop a powerful AI, teach you to write code, have the AI replace you as a developer. But really? <laughs> yeah. So right now with the existing tool, it'll be a little bit difficult to do it because for you to write the entire code or uh, code for the project it's not a single file it's it'll be like hundreds of different files libraries sdks apis connected so i've been using it for my uh, startup projects recently and i wanted to share what was uh what really worked out for me so there are four things that i absolutely loved about chatgpt I used it as a planning tool, debug assistant, sample code generation, and technical documentation. So number one was a planning tool. So here, if you guys are learning about ChatGPT, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with mobile apps, website, tech-related projects. So here, so one thing that everybody needs to do is planning. What type of software would you want to build? Should I build a website? Should I build a mobile app? If we are building a mobile web app, what type of platform do we use? So, so I've been using this very often to just get second opinion because sometimes I want to use one tool, but not everybody agrees. So I've been asking ChatGPT, I'm developing an iOS mobile app using Swift. I do not intend to create an Android version. 
what is the most cost efficient server available to host this application. So here I get a lot of options. And uh, like Dean demonstrated, we can follow up and uh, provide additional details and it'll remember your original conversation and start adding on. So can you, uh, can so here I even have grammar error. Can you suggestion good free options? Uh, that meant, uh, can you suggest a free option? That's good. And then it gave me a lot of free options. Here, it gets interesting because I actually had one uh, one server hosting in mind that I wanted to use that the chat GPT didn't cover in its answer. So I followed up. What about AWS LightSail? You didn't list it in uh, top five. Do they offer any free hosting? And it turns out they do offer free hosting partially. They offer free host, uh, free trial, which is not completely free. So the AI list, the machine listed as non-free. So if you play around a little bit, you'll get a lot. It's very insightful, in, especially when you're researching your tools. So highly recommended. Number two hey. is... I Yes. I just wanted to add in there, guys, on Haley's number one. I actually had a government RFP due in last week. Um, and on one of the RFP, the questions, the consulting, you know, one of the largest consulting firms came back to me and said, we will need you to fill out this requirement on this these particular terms on blockchain and something on tokenization. And can you just get that back to us in five minutes? And I went on chat GPT. I just asked it for the question. Hold on. And I sent it to them from chat GPT going, here's what chat GPT has to say. Would you like me to further you know, explain it or is this OK? And they came back and they're like, no, 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 we're OK. <laughs> it's an amazing tool for planning. Anybody <laughs> tech related? Uh, um, I wouldn't call it advice, but if you need it for planning, absolutely go for it. And along with this, uh, debug assistant. So uh, I saw a couple of hands uh, hands up for the software developers. So here I know tracing um, tracing your bug is impossible. I mean, it's not impossible, but you know, it's very difficult and it might be time consuming. So in instead of going through every single post on Stack Overflow, I decided to ask Ch Chat GPT hey, I'm developing a website and I'm seeing this error and I copy pasted error message. Do you know what's causing this? And I see uh, five different possibilities. So I started to try uh, debug, um, checking every single option. And then the next page I followed up. I know number one and number two are definitely not the cause. Can you tell me more about this particular cause and by the way, my website is hosted in the UAE. And here, the uh, ChatGPT started to give me more detailed instruction on how to approach this error and what may be the cause, what are the fixes. So debug assistant, I wouldn't call it debugging tool, but I would, I'm calling it assistant because it's very similar to uh, your interaction with your colleague. Because when, uh, when you're talking to another colleague, they don't act they don't accurately describe the exact fixes, but they inspire you to find what's causing the problem. So imagine you're talking to a colleague, another developer in your team, just describe, follow up, and it is very helpful. It sometimes, like if you are like, when, you're, when you have 200 tabs open on your Google tab, it might be <laughs> difficult to remember which was where, where you find what, ChatGPT can assist you with that. And along, uh, along the same line, sample code generation. So for me, ChatGPT wasn't able to replace the entire coding part, but uh, similar to the marketing field that Dean explained, it was a very good inspiration. So, so YouTube has you know, 60 minute, 90 minute, very long tutorials, but here I would just ask for a sample code. Like, hey, here is the intention that I have. So I want to build a code for a survey. Can you give me a sample code? And it would give me exactly that sample code that I can take it from. And not exactly the code that you are looking for. Uh, you can give uh, restrictions. Like, uh, I want a sample code, uh, sample code for making 
text form field required for all inputs, and then it will start to uh, the chat GPT will modify the code uh, in a way that you want, and then give that sample code. And the best part was it would actually explain why they added that part and why it's important. Last but not least, my favorite part. Are you guys familiar with GitHub? So GitHub repositories is software developer's best friend. And for me, uh, I love coding, I love programming, but writing technical documentation is not, not something that I enjoy. <laughs> so I started telling ChatGPT to write documentation for me. So here the prompt was, I build, I built an uh, Android application using Java. This application is called Magic Calculator and runs on all Android devices. Also, the key functions are calculating logs, analyze math patterns, solve integrals, and more. Can you write me a README document for a GitHub repo? And it started giving me the GitHub repo. Here, the magical part was the way they generated it. So do you see how the title is a little larger, section title a little smaller with bullet points, with numbering system? So this is the exact uh, very common readme document format that software engineers use. And without, it's not just generating the information, but it's also generating the information in a way that I want it. So anyone needs technical documentation, highly recommend it. <laughs> Wow. Oh, yeah, that's the end of my presentation, Sal. Oh, wow. Who Who is like, who has a question around that? Or who is kind of amazed? Like, what's the most shocking thing so far you've seen, guys, that has you wondering? Anyone is like a little taken back by what they're seeing so far? Any of you? I am, you know, what I'm taken back is I'm taking back about you are correct, you know, how it's curating um, really to what industry standards are that might be out there for a particular thing. And what I'm also, um, what really kind of also caught my eye before we go into our quick breakout rooms is how, you know, Dean mentioned, you know, we have confirmation bias. And I almost, and we have to be very careful about our confirmation bias. And I almost feel like um, uh, this can, and we have to be really careful about constantly just getting the stuff that just confirm the way that we think and what we believe in. And, you know, now it's all collected for us in one spot. And we have to be super, super careful um, in terms of confirmation bias about, you know, the questions we're asking and the type of information that we're getting. So, here is what I would like you guys to do now. Um, we're going to break out. Um, uh, there's two questions actually we're gonna ask in these rooms and you guys can take um, each one of them. Haley can take one and Dean can take one with his group. So one of the breakout room questions are what are the top three tasks or jobs ChatGBT will take over? I'm saying taking over. So I'm not saying working with humans, take over in the next three to six months. And then the next question, um, I, and Haley and Dean decide which one you're taking with your group, create a new product using chat GPT technology that will be a game changer in any one of these sectors, banking, marketing, or real estate. So Haley, which one are you taking or Dean? Is there, do you guys want to negotiate or, or, or is this a, uh, what do you I, take? I can take the first one. Dean, are you I'll okay with You'll take I'll the take, second one. So, so you want us to come back, just to be clear, you want us to come back with an idea. For yeah, you're going to come back with your group so that uh, mm -hmm. everyone who's in the room is going to go into a group with you. You guys are going to talk it through. You guys are going to, in your chat, come up with your comments. And uh, Haley, you are going to be a representative for your group. Dean, you're going to be the representative for your group. Mm -hmm. And you're going to come back. So can yeah. I have team... For all of you to break everyone out into breakout rooms, please two breakout rooms except me. Can we get them back. How was that, guys? How did you do? Good Very interesting conversation. Uh, <laughs> I love that with the breakout room. Um, Kate, let's see if we can get everyone to come back. Hello, Ahmed. How are you? Thank you for joining us. 
Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I'm late. I've, I've tried to log in before and I, I wasn't sure about the time, to be honest. So I just that's like okay. that's OK. That's OK. Listen, you're here. You're here. And that's all that matters. OK, I think they're coming back. I think. Yeah, there we go. There we go. We're coming back. Um, so let's find out um, what happened in the rooms. Haley, do you want to go first? Uh, hold on. People are still coming coming back in. Are people still sitting in the rooms, Kate? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Haley, what was your room tackling and what did you find out? Are you can there, you, Haley? Yes, yeah. can, can you see the questions? Yes, we can. What are the okay. top three tasks? So top three tasks that we, uh, our room came up with was number one, content creation, number two, copywriting, mm -hmm. number three, UI UX designers research step. And we also discussed some of the concerning parts. Uh, the first one was intellectual property. Uh, who gets the IP rights when you, uh, do you get the full right when you prompt the AI to generate something or is it the AI that uh, gets the IP, right? I mean, the AI developer. And also another concern that we discussed was educational aspect for students. So if young generation, if they use AI to do their task and they don't have the filter to validate the information yet, uh, how do we tackle that problem? Oh, wow. And you're absolutely right, right, right? Because there are school districts, I think New York school district, they have banned chat GBT. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I know that, you know, going as a kid, going to write is where all your creative juices flow, right? Like we make up stories and all kinds of things. What happens when we stop using our own brain children to mm -hmm. do that? And we have chat GBT do all of that for us, right? Um, interesting. Very good. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Dean? Let's hear what uh, you guys came up with. So we, we, we went down the marketing route. Uh -huh. um, and we looked at the question, the, the challenge was uh, create a product. Um, have you got that up so everybody can see it, Sally Ann? Can we put that up? Just, of course um, you can. Go ahead and share. So, no, your, your challenge to us. Oh, oh, uh, yes. So I can so, go ahead and share it. So we had the option of looking at banking. I think it was banking, finance. Yeah, marketing. Real estate. We went for the marketing. And one of the things we looked at was... Um, about ha um, how translation at the moment is still very clunky and how websites could basically instantly translate into fluid, um, very fluid uh, language. So if you're, you've got an English website and you need to translate to Chinese, a lot gets lost and it becomes words directly translated. So we actually played with it in, in there and converted text into German and we did it. And then we did it another way where we asked it to turn it into conversational German. And, and Leah was like, that's pretty good compared to Google translate. So imagine having the ability to instantly translate anything into any language. And currently there were limitations on websites it would basically mean you could you could communicate, you could plug it into emails and the recipient would get it in their native language, conversational. Um, and how powerful would that be to do business across the world? Oh, my God. You just made me think of something like um, and that is so powerful. I remember when we rolled out Gleek um, at uh, one of our clients a couple of years ago, Prada, we had a whole group of mandarin speaking um uh, employees and they actually came and said can you localize the app can you localize because it was questions you know uh, for text and you know you while you were speaking i just light bulb just went off in my head because so many people would have um you, we, you could, you're absolutely right language and localizing language is a huge i love that hold on you just gave me an idea dean <laughs> You totally just gave me an idea. So, um, guys, um, I think ChatGBT is going to be in all of our lives. 
I don't think there is any getting around it. So I want to, um, first of all, thank our speakers. And here is how you thank the speakers. Not only do it do it here and stay connected to them, you can go on our trust pilot at Glee. Kate is going to put the link. Tell them how you felt about their work. We share this with them. They can share it with their audiences. Um, so uh, please, you know, I, I, I wholeheartedly, Haley, what interesting perspectives on the on this pr product. And I promise you guys the recording of this, you're going to look back at it six months from now and a year from now and go how much we did not know yet how much there is no expert right now except the people who built chat gpt on it we're all collectively learning as a group um and all of these different points of views are planting seeds because at the end of the day it's our questions that's going to guide the direction of this product um so i you know it, it's it's you know please stay in touch with everyone on here if some of you here in the room are Gleek mentors like IPEC, raise your hand. Uh, there are several of you that are mentors. If you're not yet, please sign up and be a mentor. This is how we learn at Gleek. We learn from people who are tinkering, doing it, been there, done that, doing it. It's the best way how to learn and also share. Everybody has something to share in this community, uh, wherever you are on your journey. No, we had no Zoom bomber today. We had a Zoom bomber one time. And I want to just remind you guys, you can get Zoom. We, get, we, work, we plan for everything. <laughs> um, you can get CPD credits. And on that note, I want to thank all of you wholeheartedly for giving us your evening after your day of work to come out um, and to learn together. Um, what a pleasure to spend this time with you. Um, so thank you.